The best advice I could tell people that are trying to break into tech is I'm tired of working on the front end right now. It's kind of frustrating, not gonna lie. I'm a firm, firm believer that every single developer. So the startup itself is called. So the startup itself is called Empor, which is short for Emporium, which is a marketplace. The whole idea is to essentially build a marketplace that's exclusive to university students. Marketplaces are currently absolutely filled with a bunch of different scams, so it's just not safe to buy online anymore. By matching students with other students, you're going to actually reduce the likelihood of these scams drastically and also increase the number of transactions. This is because the trust factor within a university community encourages more people to participate and then engage in buying and selling. We're also gonna include the opportunity to rent out products. I believe it's such an untapped market that we'll greatly benefit from. Now that is not the big selling point for our startup. It's actually these next two features that I absolutely love. So on Empor, we're offering a services tab, which can include things like one-on-one -on -one mentorship, even paying for a $10 coffee chat, or you could have one-on-one -on -one tutoring, group tutoring, all of that. And if you even want someone that could help you move in, you can list a service on Empor and maybe somebody will be willing to help you out. Now, finally, a massive part of university is your social life, and this goes hand in hand with ticketed events. From ticketed events, people very frequently buy off the resale market and people get scammed from this all the time. The idea is that by placing students in a shared marketplace, they're more likely to trust each other and will greatly reduce this amount of scamming. Not only that, but a student's reputation in their university will be on the line, so hopefully they're not going to do anything stupid as opposed to something like a Facebook marketplace, where you'd be buying off of some complete stranger you find on the internet. Anyways, as you can tell, we got a lot to do, so let's hop into the development for today. I just realized I never really explained how we're going to make it exclusive to university students. Basically, you're going to have to log in with your student email. You're going to receive a verification code. And only after that, are you able to create an account? So let me show you everything in the code. We have this authentication through sending a mail to a user's inbox with a verification code. And that way we guarantee the student is indeed a university student. This is what it looks like right now when you get an email from us with a verification code, but we're yet to style it. If you have any recommendations, leave it in the comments. Our website is not properly designed we're just going to be focusing on functionality to make sure that everything is actually properly connected to the back end today specifically i'm finishing up the adding to cart and then i'm going to add a login and sign in page to be able to handle all the jwt authentication in the front end One of my favorite things about this startup is that I'm actually only the CTO and we have a massive, massive team. This means that I can focus on the code, which I absolutely love. And I don't have to worry about stuff like managing finances, all the marketing, all of the operations. And I could do this for like five or six hours every single day and not get burnt out. I absolutely love it. It's 3 p.m. and I need to change the scenery, so let's go to the library. McGill's library has these new ultra-wide monitors and look how nice this looks for a setup. 
I'm tired of working on the front end right now. It's kind of frustrating, not gonna lie. So I'm gonna switch to working with the Stripe API for all payment purposes. So I've done a lot of research on this to try to find the best way to handle all payments. Basically we wanna have secure transactions between two people on the platform. And we also wanna take a little share, like 5% so we can actually generate revenue on our startup. And it looks like Stripe has their own API that's used by both DoorDash and Instacart. So I'm just reading through all this API docs and hopefully I could get it done by the end of today. The best advice I could tell people that are trying to break into tech is instead of trying to build those generic coding projects like calculators or to-do lists, try building out your own startup idea. It doesn't have to be groundbreaking. If you have some product that might have a user base, try building it. Best case, you get a little bit of money. Worst case, you have something to put on your resume and you gained experience working in full stack development, deploying a coding project, which is just invaluable experience in the field. One of the best things about working on a startup is that I'm genuinely excited to work and to code. Like, look at this, I've been sitting here working on my Next.js application for like the last three hours and the library is closing and I didn't even realize. Anyways, now it's time to take a break and hit the gym. It's a chest day, so I'm super excited. All right, now that I'm back from the gym, it's time to start coding again. Those late night sessions just hit different. Look, I love my setup with all the lights. But first I wanna say that I'm a firm, firm believer that every single developer has to go to the gym at least two or three times a week. And it's not just to fight the stereotype that developers don't touch grass and all that. I'm actually a firm believer that a healthy body is a healthy mind and it actually improves my own ability to code. Like, look at this. So I came back from the gym and actually decided I'm just gonna rewrite the entire application configuration for an hour or so and believe it or not it actually ended up working it was a bunch of small stupid errors that accumulated one of them being i forgot to add options in this allowed methods and there were just so many small things that snowballed i can't tell you the amount of times that i've had a bug in my code after hours and hours of looking at it i stepped away did some sort of physical exercise and i found a solution almost immediately it's there must be some sort of study on it it works wonders for me so that's it for me today. I think we coded like seven or eight hours. It was really productive. I'm actually gonna sign off and head over to a friend's house to just relax. It's important to do that too. But if you have any questions, there's no such thing as a bad question or any feedback or literally anything, leave it in the comments. I'm happy to answer every single one of you. I'll see you in the next one.